How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you about how I went from nursing into software development. And oh boy, was it a journey. There were a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of doubt, a lot of success, and a lot of joy. So buckle up, I'm going off script, and without further ado, here's how I went from nursing to software engineering and some of the things I learned along the way. So first off, let's just get some of the numbers and facts out of the way. I got my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing in 2014, and then I was a nurse for about four-ish years. In between there, I went back and got my Bachelor's of Science in Computer Science. I started that in 2016, and then finished that up in 2018. At the end of 2018, I got my first real software engineering job, and I've been in the industry ever since. A lot of people online and in real life, past coworkers, they've asked me why I got up out of nursing. Why did I make the transition? Long story short, I got super, super burned out. And I know a lot of nurses out there feel the same way. I still have coworkers who are working super, super long shifts, really, really overloaded, not getting support from management, and it's really, really hard. But this video isn't so much about why nursing is hard, but more about making that transition. So I was really burned out. I was like at the end of my ropes and I needed a change. I needed to do something else. I'd always been really interested in tech and I'd always been really into like video games and making web stuff and doing things online with friends. I wasn't really doing a lot of coding. In high school and college, I made a few silly little websites. I remember in college having a blog and I remember having to edit some of the HTML and CSS but I wasn't doing anything like creating huge, large applications or making giant code bases or anything. I think some of the silly projects I had, at one point I had made a dating website for Frodo Baggins. I kid you not, I'm gonna try and find it and put it in the video. But essentially it was this very neon colored website with pictures of Frodo Baggins on it. Mostly it was just HTML and CSS. And I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. I hosted it somewhere and I would send it to my friends as a joke. I was so proud of myself. I thought it was so neat that I could make something on the internet, put it out there for my friends to see. It was really bad. <laughs> it was very, very bad. The first stuff you're gonna make is gonna be awful, trust me. And that's okay, you're gonna fail. The, the first things you're gonna make are not gonna be good. That's awesome. That's how you can start failing forward, I really think and you'll get better, you'll continue to iterate, you'll continue to learn things. Nobody, nobody makes their very first thing and it's good. Everything, the first thing you're gonna make from a project or a framework or a language is gonna be bad and that's okay. And that brings me to my first point. You don't need to be a computer science or computer genius to get into software engineering. I hadn't really done any coding until I decided to make a transition. I knew about computers, I was computer literate enough to get by online and maybe edit a little HTML or something, but it wasn't really until I decided to make a transition that I, I wrote my first code. So if I can do it, if I can start coding at 25, then you can as well. So I knew I wanted to make this transition, I knew I wanted to move into a different field, and ultimately I decided on computer science mostly because I'm a huge dork. <laughs> but like I mentioned, I was always really into tech. I had been modding some video games and, and it was just kind of a fun pastime for me to tinker around with things. So I started learning a little bit of code. I went to freecodecamp.org and started learning a little bit of JavaScript. And it was awesome. I couldn't believe some of the things I could create just with a little bit of JavaScript and a web browser. That really is when kind of the hunger and desire I had to learn more really started. And I was just so intrigued by it that I kept learning more and more. That brings me to my second point. If you're learning something, stick with it. If you're just starting programming and you're constantly flipping back and forth between different tutorials or different frameworks or different languages, you're not really gonna learn very much. You basically need to stick with one thing, especially if you're just starting out, and then you can really start to wrap your head around that whole framework or language that you're learning, because otherwise you're just gonna kind of flounder around different tutorials and not make much progress. I usually call this analysis paralysis. It's so easy to be told, oh, you need to learn Python, oh, you need to learn JavaScript, oh, you need to learn Golang. 
stick to one of them, learn it pretty well, and you'll be in a really good place to start learning other frameworks and other languages. But stick to one thing for now, especially if you're just starting off. I also remember when I was doing nursing and working night shifts, after going through most of the free code camp tutorials, I still wanted to learn, and I got recommended CS50, which is Harvard's open online course for basically their freshman computer science class. It's incredible. It gives you a very high, broad overview of most computer science concepts, like data structures and algorithms. You even do a little bit of C, and there's some JavaScript in there as well. Absolutely incredible course. If you are in high school, or you're just starting out learning about computer science, or you're just interested to see if it's for you, go to CS50, give it a try. That course is incredible, and I really think it sets you up well for future learning in computer science. So at this point in my journey, I basically was working a lot of night shifts in my free time, writing code, doing these open online courses like Free Code Camp and CS50. I knew that it was for me. I knew that it was time to make the change. I knew that I had to get out of nursing because I was super, super burned out. And I had to make that change. So I had three options essentially, and I still think these options for most people looking to make a transition still stands true. One, you can basically be completely self-motivated and learn all this on your own. This option is not necessarily impossible. I work with people who are completely self-taught and self-motivated, and they're incredible engineers. However, you need a gargantuan amount of self-motivation to make this work because you essentially need to be the one reading the books. You are the one doing the courses. You are the one assigning the projects to yourself. There's nobody keeping you accountable. There's nothing that you are paying for. You can learn all this stuff online for free. There's nothing to prevent anybody from learning it online for free. But you have to be so self-motivated that you chug through all the hard parts. And a lot of it is really hard. That's why people go to boot camps and go to university because it's so structured that you kind of get some of the motivation lifted off of you. You know, you're being assigned things, you're being assigned readings, you're being given tests. So my point is, yes, you can learn all this stuff online for free. It's all out there. There's nothing stopping you. But it's really hard because you have to be extremely self-motivated to push through the hard parts. Second, you can go to a boot camp. And I think contrary to what maybe a bunch of other software engineers think or advice I've seen on YouTube, I think today in 2020, a bootcamp can still be a pretty good option. I know plenty of people who went to bootcamps. I work with plenty of people who went to bootcamps and they're great, they're incredible engineers. I think though what's changed a bit about bootcamps today is you still have to be very self-motivated and the market isn't quite as ripe as it was maybe in 2008, 2010, when there was such a demand for basically anybody who could write any code. That's why a lot of these boot camps became a thing, is companies in Silicon Valley like Google and Amazon would hire boot camp grads straight out of boot camps who had done six weeks of coding because they had such a great demand for that talent. Now today in 2020, it's gotten a little more competitive it's a little harder, I think, as a bootcamp grad to get a six-figure job right out of bootcamp, but I don't think it's impossible. I think you still have to be extremely self-motivated. It's still pretty hard because you're cramming all this stuff into your brain over six or so weeks or six months, but you can stand out and you can get a really, really great job right out of bootcamp if you put that effort in. And finally, option three is go back to university. And that's actually the option that I ended up going with. I found a really great program online through a big state school, and this program was awesome. I got a lot of my credits already fulfilled from my previous degree, so I didn't have to take freshman English again, I didn't have to do basic math again. They sort of market this program as a way for people with a bachelor's already to get a second bachelor's. So I did that, and it took me about two years to do the whole program. I think in all, and I'd have to look this up online, I think it was about 30 credits or so. Hey everyone, Editing John here, and it was actually 60 whole credits. A typical bachelor's is something like 100 or 120 credits, maybe even more. But this program, it was through Oregon State University, they kind of expected you to already come in with the freshman requirement credits or the general ed credits. So really the only classes I took were core computer science classes, whole 60 credits of them. 
And at that point kind of began my long grind where I was working and also going back to school. I was doing a lot of night shifts and then during the day I would wake up and do school stuff. And it was really hard. It was a long, long, grueling two years. Uh, eventually I ended up actually quitting my nursing job and just did school full time. I picked up some TA gigs for classes and those paid okay. I was basically making minimum wage doing office hours and stuff. But my biggest point here is if you decide to make this transition and if you decide to be self-taught, do a boot camp, go back to university, you have to be extremely, extremely good at managing your time. Don't start projects a day before they're due. Make sure you're starting projects and assignments early. Review the lectures early. Study early because Adults in our 20s, in our 30s, we don't really have the convention of going to university, being in a dorm, and being able to study any time we want. We have other adulthood responsibilities, unfortunately, I know. So, manage your time well, and start things early, and you'll have a lot of success. I've been asked before what motivated me to do that, what motivated me to work and also do school. I was constantly busy. I didn't really have a life. And a big part of what motivated me was this community of people I found. There was a Slack community for this online school and they pushed me through it. They helped me so much get to the place that I am today. Without that community of people, I really don't know if I would have succeeded at, like I did. It wasn't just the Slack community that I found through school. It was also my community of friends and family in real life. My wife, God bless you. She supported me through all this. And granted, it was expensive. University is not cheap. And she financially supported me, emotionally supported me. She would cook me meals, make me coffee. And those long nights when I was doing schoolwork, I appreciated that so much. And if this video is anything, it is a love letter to my wife for supporting me through all of that. And that person might be a best friend to you. That person might be your parents who help you through and give you the motivation and support you need to make a transition. It's really hard. There's a lot of work to be done and reshifting your brain out of a profession you maybe have been in for years is challenging work. Finding those people who can motivate you and give you the support you need to make it through is so powerful so so powerful so if you're starting a transition into software engineering or a different career find those people in your life to help you and push you through eventually i got an internship and i don't know if a lot of people in my position transitioning out of a career into another one have this opportunity but thankfully again my wife was so willing to support me financially emotionally every way that I was able to get an internship at a nonprofit over the summer of 2018, basically when I was finishing up school. And that actually transitioned into a part-time gig while I was finishing up school as well. I basically would work a few hours a day and write a little bit of code. I was doing a lot of back-end financial stuff, mostly because the nonprofit revolved around donations. But that was a really good experience. If you have the opportunity and the means to go get a little bit of CS experience while you're transitioning into software engineering, definitely do it. Definitely do it. And even if it's at your current job, I know a lot of accountants who've learned a little bit of Python and then transitioned that into their actual job. That's real monetary value that you're producing at your current job by using programming. You can put that on a resume and that looks good. So if you have the opportunity to get an internship, definitely do it. And if not, if you're at your current job, try and write a little bit of code and see if you can automate a process and then put that on a resume and you can use that to get a real software engineering job. I eventually finished up school at the end of 2018 and then got a job at a really, really great company with great benefits and better pay than I ever would have imagined in nursing I would have gotten. The amount of joy and weight that was lifted from me when I finally finished school was honestly life-changing. This has been the best decision I've ever made in my life, but it was really, really challenging. It was really hard to stay motivated through all of that and work, do an internship, go back to school, all the above. I basically didn't have a life for two years, but it all paid off. That's probably one of my biggest pieces of advice in this video, is it will pay off. It will pay off in the end. You can make really good money in software engineering, and you can have really great work-life balance as well. It's very challenging to get there. It's definitely a journey, but it's worth it, and it pays off. 
So let's talk a little bit about the interviewing process and the actual practice of getting a job in software engineering. I've said it before on this channel, I've said it on TikTok, I've said it on Twitch, which reminds me, follow me across the internet for all of your internet software engineering needs. I'm on Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, probably other places I can't remember. <laughs> no, but really, I'm really thankful for the love and support you guys have shown me. Like, subscribe, hit all the buttons. Thank you guys so much. Anyways, back to the interview process. Again, it's hard. Whiteboarding is very challenging. And if you don't know what whiteboard interviews are, Basically, you're in a room with the interviewer and they're gonna ask you programming questions and expect you to write on a whiteboard with a marker the code that would solve that algorithm or data structure problem. And it's very challenging stuff. I'm probably gonna make another advice video just about that because, oh boy, it's a whole topic. But here's my quick and dirty advice. Practice, 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 practice. Get on leak code, get on hacker rank, get on whatever and practice those problems. And eventually you'll start to figure out the patterns and the ways to solve those problems. Next, I recommend this book. I talk about this book all the dang time. This is Cracking the Coding Interview. This is the Bible of programming problems and interviews. You need this book. And if you really wanna study hard and supplement some more knowledge into your brain, I also recommend this book. This is Elements of Programming Interviews. This is the Python edition. I think they have like a C++ edition and a Java edition, but regardless, this book is great. This book goes in depth with strategy and more language specific things. I chose Python during my interviews, mostly because it was easy and uh, I knew Python fairly well back then. I don't really know it very well anymore. I don't think I've written Python since 2018. <laughs> if you didn't know, I mostly write Go now and I love Go. Where are my gophers at? I'm gonna make another video just about the whole interview process, my experience and my advice. You gotta practice, get those books, read those books, and you'll be okay. So in conclusion, that's kind of my whole journey. I went from nursing, got super burned out, and decided to make a transition. I have always really enjoyed tech, but guys, by no means was I a programming genius or really knew how to program at all. I got interested at the age of 25 and started writing a little bit of JavaScript. I went through freecodecamp.org and did the Harvard CS50. That's kind of when I knew that that was the career for me. Decided to go back to school. It was a lot of hard work, but if I can do it, you can do it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or want to hear more advice on the specific topic or anything. I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreons. Shelby, thank you for all the support and love you've given me. It means the world to me. Michelle, Toby, thank you guys so much. And a new Patreon, Carlos, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Again, follow me across the inner tubes and I will catch you guys next time.